obstructive sleep apnea. So what is sleep apnea? How does one diagnose it? And what is new about this entity is what I'm going to discuss today. So obstructive sleep apnea is a condition in which there is repetitive airway closure, partial or complete, which can result in apneic events, tiredness, sleepiness in the day, and the predominant symptom being loud snoring. It's gained a lot of interest because of its adverse consequences, a rise in blood pressure, blood sugar, impaired cognitive function, chances of getting a cardiac events, arrhythmia, strokes, myocardial infarctions, etc. But what is the other big issue? The big issue is that almost one in every five adults may have sleep apnea. That is, worldwide data says one billion can have sleep apnea. India, we may have 10 to 15 million with sleep apnea. 80% to 85% more so in women remain undiagnosed and thus untreated, putting them at a great risk for adverse health consequences. So here in this video now, I'm going to share with you a relatively newer device, much easier, less intrusive, simpler to use, which has been cleared by FDA for detecting the obstructive sleep apnea. This is developed by a digital health company in Hong Kong and has received the FDA clearance in 2023. So what is this device? So this device is called as the Balloon Ring device. So I'm going to share with you what is this device, what does it record, and what are the publications or research about this so far. So this, as you can see, is a very lightweight device, basically just about 14 grams. It's worn on the finger and can record oxygen saturation. It can record something about the autonomic nervous system. Movements tell you about the total sleep time, apnea index, also some amount of the sleep architecture when it is worn through the night. How was this developed? This is an AI-based uh, device. So tons of data, millions of data sets were collected to come and uh, give you information about this. So how does it work and what does it really, how is this process taken on? So first and foremost, you might be asking the question or thinking that there is a different finger size in all individuals. So we have a measure which is provided, which can tell you the size of your finger and you make it, you know, this is what is done. And based on that, we can get different sizes of the ring. So depending upon, they go by six, seven, eight, by numerous numbers. So it tells you about how big they are, depending upon your size. Then once the ring is ready, this ring is charged by something called as a, on the cradle, and it is fixed like this and plugged into a USB to charge it. Once it's charged, it's given to the patient to wear it like I demonstrated through the night. And the next morning, the patient takes it off, puts it back on the cradle and it comes back to the doctor. Once the, the data is uploaded, the report is ready within just about 15 to 20 minutes. So that's how this ring is measured. I will just share a brief uh, presentation to show you how it really and what are we measuring. So this is exactly what I said. This is the ring. The data is uploaded through the portal and report management system and we get some graph like this. So what exactly do we measure? <clears throat> we get a start time of the study, the end time, the total recording time, the average or the balloon AHI, and total sleep time, sleep efficiency, minimum oxygen saturation, and the time the saturation has been less than 90. This is the graph where it can shows mild, moderate, and severe. And you can get some data like this, which shows you the oxygen saturation. You see how it is dipping. It tells you about the sleep stages. It tells you the pulse rate through the night 
and it also tells you about the autonomic nervous system that is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic and the actigraphy. So based on this data is what you get uh, the information whether the patient has mild, moderate or severe sleep apnea. So what has been the research so far? So there have been two major publications, one in 2000. 2020 in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine, where 50 adults were uh, with the ring was compared with the level one study simultaneously. And it was found there was a good correlation between the AHI obtained from the ring and from the level one study. Also a good correlation with the total sleep time, almost to the tune of um, 86%. And it had a good sensitivity, about 89.8%, and a specificity of 86%. Another study which was done in 2021, it was published. In this, there were 78 adults, again, simultaneous recording of the level 1 PSG. In this group, there were people with diabetes, high blood pressure, COPD, on medications such as beta blockers or calcium channel antagonists, and demonstrated the same results. So thus, uh, in conclusion, I would say that this ring is a very uh, simple, easy to use technology, good for those where the bigger level one, level two studies sometimes are cumbersome, suspicion of OSA is high, and it will lead you towards a diagnosis or help you to understand at what level of uh, severity the condition is. I do hope we can uh, work together and make this more easily available, thus enhancing the diagnostic ability or improving the diagnostics in patients with sleep apnea and thus preventing further health-related consequences. To know more, you please do feel free to contact us and we can help you with some more knowledge about this. Thank you and looking forward to working together.